I, um, I really enjoy watching, um, well, let's pray first. Father, thank you so much for, um, thank you so much for your truth. Lord, I pray for those who are here who are seeking truth, who are seeking to know more about who you are and why you love them, who are seeking to understand what it means to love you back. I pray for those who have come who just have questions and trying to understand a little bit more. I pray for those who already know who he is, but maybe have wandered a little bit too far. Lord, I pray that, that in this season of, of Easter, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. I pray, Father, that we would be reminded of what you've done for us. And that the images of Jesus on the cross and standing beside the empty tomb will resonate with us once again and, and will show us what it means to be loved by you and remind us what it means to be loved by you and it will show what it means to, to love you back. Lord, we are just so thankful for what you've done and what you continue to do in our lives. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. I really enjoy... Um, um, shows like Law and Order and police dramas like that because I, I, I'm, I'm fascinated by um, how they collect evidence. I'm fascinated by the whole procedure uh, in, the, in the courtroom and that sort of thing. But I have to admit to you, I get really angry when, when I know that the person is guilty and their defense attorney is using some loophole, some thing to kind of get them out of it. And, and it makes me nervous. I know that's just a show, but then I also think about real life, and sometimes that kind of stuff is, is sort of scary. Um, in Matthew chapter 27, verse 19, um, it says, While Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him this message, do, do not have, don't have anything to do with that innocent man, for I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. That word innocent means it focuses on what hasn't been done. If I'm innocent of something, then it means that I didn't do it. And so when she says that, have nothing to do with this innocent man, we assume that it's because he's standing in a trial, but as I do, I looked a little bit more deeply into this word innocent to see what it meant, and it means something more. The word is actually used to describe righteous. Someone who is committed completely to God's will. Someone who does things the way God wants them to be done. And so Jesus was more than innocent. Jesus was righteous. He was the one who would come and focus on, it focuses on the desire to do what God wants us to do. Innocence focuses on, on what hasn't been done. Righteousness focuses on what, what we should be doing and what God wants us to do and doing those things. And so whether she knows it or not, she is making a proclamation about who Jesus is. He is one who is completely committed to God's will. And while he was on the cross, a centurion soldier was watching everything that had happened. It says in Luke 23, verse 47, the centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, surely this was a righteous man. This was someone who was completely committed to the will of God. Someone completely committed to what God had planned to have to be done. And Jesus was completely committed to God's will. Because Jesus chose to do God's will. He chose to do God's will. 
So many people in, in Jesus' circumstance who get a big following of people who, who, have, who have people clamoring for his attention can get big egos and, and then they lose their purpose. I've seen it time and time again within the church uh, with ministers who, who get too full of themselves and, and then they wander away from their purpose and it starts to focus on them rather than on Jesus or rather than on God. Jesus chose to do what God wanted him to do. And he kept that, he kept choosing that every single day. After an encounter with the Samaritan woman in John chapter 4, his disciples had gone into town to get some food and bring it back. And when they brought it back, Jesus, the, the woman had left, and Jesus was sitting there, and they're trying to get him to eat. Here, here, Master, eat something, eat something. And he says in John 4, 34, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and accomplish his work. In another place, in John chapter 6, where he is talking about the, um, the, him being the bread of life, he says this, for I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but to do the will of him who sent me. Even when death was imminent, Jesus chose to do God's will. One of my favorite passages is Luke chapter 9, verse 51, because we get a real sense of Jesus' choice here. As the time approached for him to be taken up to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. Now, when I preached on this passage before, I've talked about the fact that when we know, if we think that we're going to die, then we're going to do everything that we can to prevent that from happening. If we know that we're going to die, we go into a certain city and it's been told that we will kill you, then, then we try really hard either to beef up security or, or, we, or we just don't go. Luke is very careful in the word that he uses here because resolutely is he is set on this. He knows exactly what's going to happen, and he's going to go anyway. And he is resolutely determined to get there. So instead of running away when he knew he was going to die, he resolutely set out for Jerusalem. In Matthew 28, verse 39, Jesus says, or going a little farther, he fell on his face with his face to the ground and prayed, My Father, if it is possible... May this cup be taken from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. I wonder sometimes when I read that passage how, how much of a pause there was between um, the phrase, if it is possible, take this cup from me, to yet not my will, but yours be done. I think it would have taken me a really long time. To get to that place. I might have sat silently for a long time before I came to that. But Jesus is resolute about what he, he knows what he has to do. He knows what it's going to cost him. Daniel gave a very vivid description of what, what crucifixion was like in that day. He knew that that was going to happen to him. He knew he, would going to, he was going to lose a lot of blood from the beating and the, and, the, and the flogging that he was going to receive. He knew that he would suffocate and his organs would shut down while he was on the cross. He knew all of that. But he went anyway. Yet not my will, but yours be done. When Jesus was in the wilderness, his divinity and humanity were tested before his ministry. Before his ministry and after his baptism, he goes into the wilderness and he is tempted for 40 days. And during those temptations, the, the, the enemy, Satan, is saying to him, if you're really the Son of God, if you're really the Son of God, then do these things. And each time Jesus resisted that test. And the same thing is happening here in the garden. Jesus' humanity and divinity were tested in the wilderness at the beginning of his ministry, and now it's being tested again at the end of his ministry, and still he chooses what? To do God's will. Yet not my will, but yours be done. I love, <laughs> again, here's the resolution. 
Look, the hour has come. The Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let's go. Here comes my betrayer. He's resolute. He's just spent a lot of time praying to God and asking God to remove this cup. And yet, now, not my will, but yours be done. And after some more time of prayer, he's ready to go. He was completely committed to God's will. And he asks his followers to do the same. Do you remember the model prayer, the Lord's Prayer? What he prays? I want you to say this with me. Okay? Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your on earth as it is in heaven. It's just not a prayer we pray rotely without any thought to it. This is a prayer that Jesus wants us to pray, to come to this realization that God is holy in heaven. The God of heaven is holy. And we should be submitting to His will as Jesus submitted to His will. We should be saying with Jesus, Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We want your will to be done, God. We want very much for you to do what it is that you need to do in us. And we submit to that. Because Jesus was completely committed to God's will. Not only did, God, did Jesus choose to do God's will, Jesus fulfilled God's will. He did everything that he was supposed to do for the purpose that God had called him to do it. His purpose was to come. So that our sins would be forgiven. So that we could be made holy. I love the way Hebrews chapter 10 verses 9 and 10 says this. He says, he, then he said, look, I have come to do your will. That's exactly what Jesus said. He cancels the first covenant in order to put, in, to put the second covenant into effect. The first covenant was ruled by, by sacrifices of animals. Every single day, the priest would, would make sacrifices for the sins of the people. Every single day, blood was shed for the sins of the people. But since Jesus came, that no longer needs to happen. He says, therefore, God's will was for us to be made holy by the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all time. Say that with me. Once for all time. No other sacrifice needs to be made because of what Jesus did for us. Jesus fulfilled the purpose of God. Jesus fulfilled the will of God by coming and dying on the cross for our sins. He fulfilled the will of God when he was raised from the dead so that we could have the hope of eternal life with him in heaven. In Colossians chapter 1, verses 21 and 22, Paul says, Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. Do you see that? I looked up that word enemies. you know what it means? Enemies. You know what an enemy is? Someone who is hostile to you. Someone who, who goes out of their way to make things bad and worse for you. So in our sin, because of our own evil desires, we were hostile to God. We refused to do what God wanted us to do. But because of what Jesus did, he's brought reconciliation. He's given us the opportunity to make things right with God by giving of ourselves to him. He goes on to say, but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through, the death, through, through death to present you holy in his sight, without blemish and free from accusation. Innocent. You've been declared not guilty because of what Jesus did for you. I'm going to ask you a rhetorical question. Not if you want to. Are you guilty? Yes. We are. We deserve to die for the sins that we've committed. We do. 
But the good news is we don't. We don't have to because Jesus died for us. So while we were enemies, Romans says, Christ died for us. Even though we were hostile to God, Jesus came and died for us. In Matthew 16, 21, when Aaron preached on this passage or, or um, what Peter says, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Further on in this passage, and I don't know if Aaron did mention this a little bit, so we're going to do it. Matthew 16, 21. After Peter makes this great proclamation, it says, From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Now that didn't sit well with Peter. And he questioned that. And he came at Jesus. The very man who makes this great proclamation about Jesus being the Son of God now is being called, get behind me, Satan. Because Jesus knew that this is what had to be done. And so he resolutely set out to do it. Jesus understood where his commitment to his Father's will would lead him, but he went anyway. And he challenges his followers to do the same thing. In Matthew 16, verses 24 to 27, Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. And, who, and whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world and yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in His Father's glory with His angels, and then He will reward each person according to what they have done. This is not a proclamation that we earn our way into heaven because we cannot do that. This is more of a proclamation that we are doing the will of God or at least trying to do the will of God. I had a conversation with someone who was worried about that they weren't perfect. And after I said, welcome to the club, we talked about target practice. And those of you who have shot a gun or an arrow, you know that you're going there to shoot something. And, and if you're just firing arrows and firing bullets into the air, what are you doing? You're, you're being, what was the word you used today, Carrie? You're being careless. The idea of going hunting, the idea of going to target practice is to aim at the target. That's what we are encouraged to do. We are encouraged to aim for perfection. We're encouraged to give effort to it. We're encouraged to give effort to following the purpose of God. Jesus was completely committed to doing God's will. He was completely committed to, to doing his part, to fulfill his part of what God wanted him to do. Go and do likewise. Let's pray. Father in heaven, every single day we come, every single Sunday, every single day that we get up, we, we, we come into your presence and we have choices that we need to make. God, I pray that we would choose you. I pray, Father, that we would always want to choose you. That every day we would strive to choose you and aim to choose you. God, what we have to give you isn't very much. It's imperfect. It's flawed. But we're so thankful that you accept it. And that you love us. 
that you care about us. Even while we were still sinners, even while we were still enemies, you died so that we could have hope. You died so that you would welcome us, so we could be welcomed back into a relationship with you. I pray that we would choose to choose to do your will and that we would fulfill whatever purpose it is that you've called us to do so that others may know how much you love them. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.